Shalom is celebrating 40 years of providing counseling services in this community and 40 years of conversations. Even prior to 1983, conversations were happening among church leaders and pastors about the need for counseling services as a resource to the faith community and the community at large. Shalom's location in Waterloo opened its doors in September 1983, located here at Herb Street Mennonite Church, in a Sunday school room tucked in behind the pulpit. Today, we have our beautifully renovated space, the church house that we call home. So many pivotal conversations have happened over the past 40 years with clients, donors, board members, staff, and community partners that continue to shape Shalom's vision and mission of supporting people to grow towards peace and wholeness. Important themes and values that ground the work of Shalom have remained constant, and they include peace, excellence, accessibility, diversity and inclusion, spiritually integrated, an extension of the church's mission, and a committed donor base. Join with me in listening to some of these conversations. I was executive director of the Shalom Center in Waterloo from 80, 1984 to 89. And I was involved in discussions in setting it up. I don't remember the pieces of that. My resume says that I had conversations about setting up Shalom in Elmira, but I have no memory of that process. Yeah. So, and then I think it was Ralph that invited me to be chair of the organization from 84 to 89. My name is Andrew Roth. I'm a former board member and uh, board chair. Um, one of the things that I think back fondly about my time on the Shalom board was the development of this building that we're sitting in. And exactly. I, I was the chair during that time. And I... I'm Brian Hunsberger. I worked at Shalom uh, on a part-time basis from 2010 to 2014. My role um, changed a little bit in the course of that. Initially, I came to Shalom on just on a contract to provide a review and recommendations with respect to um, development slash fundraising uh, sorts of things. So. The good news is that I never did counseling at Shalom. Lots of jokes about that, yes. So, so my role was entirely related to um, fundraising and development type issues. I'm Renee Souter, mm -hmm. a retired pastor now, and um, my association with Shalom um, has been throughout my years at, at MCEC and particularly the years that I uh, was serving at the Herb Street Mennonite Church, where Shalom was located. In 1993, mm -hmm. um, I began as yes. pastor at Herb Street Mennonite Church. Um, prior to that, uh, Shalom um, was utilizing a small classroom uh, located uh, in the church building, but just uh, off of the pulpit area. Uh, but in 1993, uh, Shalom Counseling Services had grown, so they were using the top floor of a triplex that was physically connected to the church building. So that's where they uh, were at the time uh, when, I, when I began uh, my ministry at, at Herb Street. I think it started primarily because they wanted to serve Mennonite people who had issues that needed counseling. And they wanted a setting that would feel comfortable to them because it was related to Mennonite. It was at the Herb Street Church. That's, of course, one immediate identification. And the other is the choice of words, loam. I mean, that fits a little bit that community's background. So I think that that was what Bill Dick 
and Ralph Liebold, who were the two people who really initiated it from what I read, um, why they began with the conversation they did. I think it was part of the original vision, and that is the counseling we would do um, would would in some way be determined. The counseling would be determined based on people's income. Conversation was that I recall, and this was one that was probably ongoing for a while. Is okay. What does it mean to grow a business that loses money as it grows, and how do you? How do you functionally, or how do you continue to function in in, uh, in that business? And should we be growing? So there were a lot of discussions around that and about giving tools to staff to ensure that um, uh, when they were meeting with people, they were, we, you know, we were being appropriate in the compensation that we were receiving because they do provide an excellent service, and we want to make sure that you know people are paying what they're able, and uh, we don't want to discourage anyone, but also don't want to devalue what we provide. So I remember a lot of discussions around that and the decision was then made that no, we we feel we have more to give and uh, we're ready to move forward and, and uh, go with a larger space and, and one that frankly is, was more appropriate for the services we were providing. What I discovered fairly early on in kind of evaluating what had been done was that Shalom was doing very well in fundraising with very little effort um, being put into that. And there was a reason for that. They had a base of, of, of donors that were committed donors. Yes. They were not large in number, but they, there was a good base to build on there. Yes. So, so that made the second step a little bit easier, that if they could do that well without putting any effort into it, yes. if we put a little more effort into it, how much better could we do? And I think what ended up happening then is is proved that point that we were able to move along stepwise fairly uh, fairly well, just by implementing a few relatively simple things. And I believe it was around 2001 that the Herb Street congregation began to identify their own changing needs for additional space. Right. And it was articulated immediately that whatever the congregation chose to do, we would need to find a way to accommodate Shalom. So in 2002, uh, Shalom moved out of the Herb Street Church building to the main floor of a house located um, uh, off of the parking lot. <laughs> that was also owned by the church. And this is, of course, your current location that underwent another expansion and renovation in 2015. I think I've already said, and that is making counseling for people of our churches available in a context that felt comfortable to them. One of the things that I really value about Shalom is the outreach that the organization has done with uh, raising awareness of mental health issues and reducing stigma, um, both within the Mennonite community and uh, and the community more generally. So I think of the number of times, uh, the Mennonite community specifically, the number of times that Shalom um, staff have uh, have spoken in churches or helped out on um, Sunday school or, or whatever. Um, I think that that's really helpful. And I think the breakfast, the, the brunch does a lot to help with that too. I can think of a number of speakers over the years who um, were able to share their own experiences in a way that probably we wouldn't have been comfortable doing 25, 30 years ago. The other thing that I really value about Shalom for a small organization, I feel like it has an outsized community in influence in the, in the broader community. Um, and, you know, with some recent news of some more consolidations and stuff in the industry, I think Shalom has a really important role to play in shaping the public narrative. And, um, and, I, th and I think Shalom has done that in the past and continues to do it today. And What I discovered fairly early on was just by talking to people um, about the work of Shalom was that 
that Shalom had a niche uh, that was fairly highly respected in the counseling world. And um, uh, so again, I think there was, a, there was a good base to build on there. There was a good cooperative relationship with other counseling agencies. And there was some sort, I don't know what it was called, but there was some kind of structure where these, where these, um, where these agencies met and shared ideas and, and established a col collaborative um, kind of uh, relationship. More recently, uh, before my retirement, I was part of a clergy group that met monthly with one of the counselors. The, this uh, pastor and counselor consultation group provided the opportunity for us pastors to bring issues that we were facing in the context of our ministry into conversation with a mental health professional. Uh, each of the pastors in our group benefited immensely uh, from Karen Haynes. She was our counselor, her wise counsel. And one of the things I think each of us most appreciated was her beautiful prayers spoken for each of us at the end of our meetings. It's not often that pastors uh, are prayed for, and each of us found this deeply moving and life-giving. And I think this also speaks to the fact that at its deepest source, Shalom's work is spiritual, as you offer Shalom, the peace of God's presence through your compassionate care. We celebrate a rich history, and we look forward to the future as Shalom continues to uniquely respond to the mental health needs in our community.